As Trilog, we're collaborating with you uh, and your wider on uh, a study on the interaction between market integration and regional industrial development, um, an area that's um, very high on the priority of most regional economic groupings. And we're particularly um, in this phase of, of our collaboration focusing on the Southern African Development Community um, regional industrial development um, process. I feel it's an important area to really be looking at um, presently because of the priority that has been given um, in the regional economic integration agenda, not only in SADC, but in other regional economic communities as well. Um, uh, I think also at the continental level, there is this focus on, um, on industrial development and a three-pronged approach um, to industrial development, where there's market integration, um, which is linked to industrial development, but also there's infrastructure, um, which comes into the picture to play an, an, a supporting role in the process. Um, and so, especially in SADC, there's been a shift from the initial thinking of a linear approach to, to integration to now focus on how to develop regional value chains um, so that at least countries can move from being prime exporters of primary products to, to higher value um, um, products. So it's, it's definitely an area that we need to look at. And uh, especially when you look at the interaction between the three, um, certainly what we're seeing is that market integration plays a, a critical role in supporting um, industrial development. And the tools are already there, for example, the SADC um, Protocol on Trade, which has all the provisions um, for market integration, but it's actually in effectively implementing these provisions that we can actually realize um, industrial development on, on, the regional, on the regional level. Although those positives are there, there are also some tensions that we actually note um, between market integration and industrial development, um, especially where um, countries have a, a national policy space um, to actually try and promote the industrial development um, objectives. You actually see that sometimes this can run counter to the commitments that they made in the market integration agenda. So I we feel this is really important for, for us to um, really explore these different uh, links that are, that are within this um, sort of developmental integration agenda framework. What we've done initially uh, is just a broad study, um, reviewing the SADC trade protocol and uh, re reviewing um, implementation of the, of, of the market integration agenda within this um, protocol. Um, so we've looked at the six sections of the of the SADC trade protocol, and uh, overall, at, at, at the outset, I think we're seeing about four initial findings. Um, there are definitely some provisions in there that are clear in terms of the obligations that mar that member states have in terms of market integration. Um, but you see that because as they actually pursue their national industrial development objectives, they're actually um, infringing on some of these um, commitments. Uh, so that's 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 the first um, main finding that we um, that we have. Um, secondly, we're also looking at the actual instruments within um, the regional integration framework itself. So the protocol provides for, for example, on rules of origin. Um, it's a highly contentious issue. Um, the rules of origin in SADC were designed to um, actually promote um, regional value chains, but they're actually having the opposite effect. Um, where it's really difficult because they're product specific and uh, the requirements for the different descriptions are actually quite uh, quite complex. So you actually find industries failing to develop and link into regional value chains because of the complexity of the rules of origin. So even though there's countries in the first instance where countries are infringing on their um, commitments, there's also instruments within um, the, the protocol itself which actually run counter to um, regional industrial development. So thirdly, there's um, governance-related aspects um, within the regional integration framework, especially on trade-related issues. Um, so areas like investment services, for example, competition policy. Um, so just to take, for example, the, um, uh, the area of investment, um, uh, we actually see that the governance framework is such that uh, it, it puts governments in a difficult position to actually be able to perfectly balance um, the rights of private investors on the one hand and uh, the rights of the, the citizens on the other hand. Um, for example, uh, one of the issues that is really high on the agenda in industrial development in SADC is uh, beneficiation and of, of region of, of natural resources, um, minerals, for, um, for example. So we know that this is an area that requires a lot of investment, heavy investment, and it will mostly entail FDI flowing into countries. 
Um, but we also know that with the beneficiation process, there are other concerns that come up like uh, health concerns or environmental concerns um, coming from emissions or disposal of waste and things like that. So um, the, the SADC FIP actually gives governments um, the right to regulate in the public interest um, against some of these concerns. Um, but you actually see that even though um, that provision is there, um, governments are actually limited in terms of the dispute settlement mechanism that they can actually access. They're actually limited to their national courts. Um, what has happened in SADC is that uh, the SADC tribunal, um, the jurisdiction of the SADC tribunal has been limited to interstate disputes. Um, so even if uh, a government was uh, wanted to bring a case, for example, against a private investor, they can't bring it to the SADC tribunal um, because the jurisdiction is limited. Um, so they're, they're only limited to the national courts. Investors can go um, to the ICSID and ANSITRA fora um, for enforcement of, of, of their rights. The SADC FIP actually provides for that, and it's an important element in the protection of, of their rights. Um, but then in the case of individual citizens, they're also limited to the national courts because uh, whereas before they could actually bring cases to the SADC um, tribunal, now because the jurisdiction is limited, they actually can't come to the regional to the regional court. So it's only the national court processes that they have um, at their disposal. So this is really an area that we feel that would have to also be looked at in, in more detail. Um, the last um, and, and perhaps most important point is what I've just alluded to as well in, in the investment um, kind of framework. It's it's on dispute settlement uh, within within SADC, and we feel that the limit of the jurisdiction to interstate disputes actually puts SADC in a in a difficult position to actually uh, protect the rights of private parties, and it's mostly the traders and the producers who are involved in in the actual trade, and and these people should actually. Um, have the ability to enforce their rights even in these regional institutions. It's, it's happening in other regions, in Comesa, the, there's a good example that has just come up. In the, in, in the EAC as well, there's also a lot of enforcement in, in, the, in, in the East African Court of Justice by private parties, um, giving them a direct route to actually be able to, to sort out certain impediments that they're facing. Um, so if you're in SADC, this dispute settlement mechanism would also have to be um, really looked at um, and is quite critical for the whole process, actually. The, the organic um, honey um, situation, it's, it's uh, imports of, of organic honey from Zambia into South Africa, um, which uh, are facing a restriction um, in South Africa, whereby there's a requirement to irradiate the honey before it can actually be imported into South Africa. The only complication being that once you, you irradiate honey, it actually loses its organic status. And uh, so organic honey is being looked at as a potential uh, area where Zambia is competitive in, in terms of industrial development. So um, there are a lot of farmers that can actually benefit from this. Um, but it's, it's an issue that was registered on the tripartite online mechanism back in 2011. And even though there's still consultations, and last we checked a few weeks ago, um, there's still consultations, even um, South Africa is currently still looking at the issue. Um, but then it hasn't been resolved since uh, since 2011, and four years, I think, is a long time for a trader that's trying to access um, a foreign market. Um, so it's, it's in this kind of area where you see that the dispute settlement mechanism doesn't really help these private traders, because now that the dispute resolution is limited to interstate parties, they have to um, rely on Zambia perhaps bringing a case against South Africa in the SADC um, tribunal. But we've seen that this is uh, quite unlikely because I think African governments uh, as a whole are not uh, really ready to litigate against each other. This is a trend that we've noticed, um, I think, over the years. Um, would we see Zambia taking South Africa to the WTO? It's also unlikely, an unlikely scenario, maybe the, the costs involved and uh, and everything. So, but there's actually a, a panel procedure that is provided for in Annex Six of the SADC um, Protocol on Trade, um, which we're actually encouraging that should actually be explored and should actually be utilized. It hasn't been utilized as yet by SADC um, member states, um, but it's an area where experts, for example, in this issue, it's it's a sanitary and phytosanitary issue. It's a highly technical issue. But there are experts in the region who can actually sit on a panel and actually look at this issue and, and try and resolve it um, so that at least um, potentially if, if such a requirement isn't there, um, 
also on the basis of the South African Department of Agriculture's study, which actually uh, found that the, the disease that was uh, that actually brought about this measure, um, the AFB is called African Fowl Blood, I think, disease, which was pre it was present in Zambia before. But uh, South the South African Department of Agriculture has found that it's not present anymore. Um, but even though they found that the, the measure is still there, so uh, you, you, this panel procedure can actually come in to um, try and resolve such an issue and, and resolve it timelessly because um, this is what really traders um, would actually want. Mm -hmm.